Welcome to Impact Discipleship 26 of D-Tree. All right. Wow. Great job. You see that, Dr. Jeff? That was amazing. All right. And Shiloh, go ahead and lead us to a prayer. Get us all started. Dear God, please let this be a very fulfillful, a fulfilling teaching by Captain Wendell. I pray that we are we are indoctrinated with sound knowledge that glorifies you. I pray that we we use mm-hmm. this knowledge in our day to day lives mm-hmm. to to exhort your light mm-hmm. in your kingdom. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for that prayer. Okay, so we got some sleepy guys here, but we're going to do this Impact Discipleship Teaching, the 26th of Tishri, and we are teaching, or we are learning out of Psalm 34, 8. Now, I would like to ask um, Brother Cyrus, would you please read from Psalm 34, 8? Just the Psalm 34, 8. Oh. One verse. <clears throat> oh, taste and see that Yahweh is good. Blessed is the man that takes refuge in him. Okay, so what I'm going over today is the topic of the difference between physical versus spiritual food. And I'd like to open up right at the beginning of this teaching by asking some stimulating questions to each of you, Sanyel, to Sydney, to Katie, to Cloud, to Shiloh, to Cyrus. We have some very fun things to talk about physical food, just at the, the top of this right here. And I would like to ask you, Sanyel, what food, now I know you're, you're getting into running, right? You wanted to run track, Sanyel, is that right? Thinking about it. Okay, so... So hold this right here. I want to address you first. I want to know what you think, food, what food do you think is best and most necessary for your body as a professional athlete in the track field running? Do you know anything about that? Or what do you think is good food overall for you, a good food to be eating that will be good for your body to help you grow muscle and things like that, keep you healthy? Fruits. Fruits. Very good. Fruits. Why? Why fruit? Because they give you proteins and are rich in nutrients or something. Amazing. That's very good. That's a good answer. Anything else? No. No? Okay. By the way, we should have started the timer by now. That's okay. All right. And now, I want to ask you the same question. Yes, sir. What do you think is a good type of food to help your body grow? Good food. We're talking about good food. Natural, healthy, whatever you want. Bananas. Bananas. It's a fruit. We already covered fruit. Anything else? Oatmeal. Oatmeal. Why oatmeal? Oatmeal is just good for you, and it tastes good. And it comforts you, right? Is that why it is? You wake up to a nice bowl of hot oatmeal, and and it's... Yeah, it's it's a good way to start your morning. And it comforts you, right? Yes. All right, well, that's, that's Dr. Jeff's, uh, you know, philosophy. You, Shiloh, what is a good food that you like to eat, that you think is good now for, for building muscles and uh, stuff like that? Rice and beans, because together they make a complete protein. And rice and beans, yeah. carbohydrates and, and protein. Yeah, and they, okay. they, they uh, I also think, um, uh, like red meats, you know, a good balance of red meats, vegetables, you know, mm-hmm. eating eating light mm-hmm. but heavy with with fruits. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, now I'm, while you're there, how do you feel after eating a meal like that? How do you feel? How does it make you feel? Uh, properly filled up, satiated. Um, I'd say, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, satiated. Okay. All right. Now, I want to ask people, Sydney, what is a food that you know is not good for you? You know it's not good. It's gonna ma- it may taste good coming in, 
but it's going to make you feel like crap for the rest of the day. Go ahead, tell me. Oatmeal pies. Oatmeal patties? Pies. Oatmeal pies. Can you tell me what an oatmeal pie is? Kind of like a cookie. Okay, what's in it? Icing in it. Icing? And why, what is it, how does it make you feel? It tastes good, right? Mm -hmm. But how does it make you feel later? Just curious. It still makes me feel great. It does? Yeah. Okay, well, I see that's not the answering my question. I'm asking you a food that, that you know it, it makes you feel bad later. Do you know anything like that? No. Huh? I just eat I, I, I heard a good question, I heard a good answer over here. Who said that? Uh, the Doritos Locos Tacos destroys you. Okay. You Totally, just you crack the porcelain bowl when you eat those. Okay. Taco Bell is dangerous. Right, it's dangerous, right? You know it's bad for you. It may taste good coming in, but later you know it's going to wreak havoc on you, right? Yes. Chicken fried chicken from Crackle Barrel. Okay, chicken did you hear that? Yes. Chicken fried chicken from Crackle Barrel. Indefinitely. Okay. Will be destroyed. All right, all these are good things. So here we have an idea of good physical food versus bad physical food, all right? We're all on the same page, right? There are many things we can be doing to, to, to eat and make sure that we're having a proper diet for our physical bodies, but what about our spiritual bodies, okay? That's where I want to lead up to, the spiritual aspect, the spiritual food. And you, and you know that God calls His Word spiritual food. And He also relates it to Four different, from, from what I can recall right offhand, he relates his word to four different items, four types of food. Milk, bread, um, meat, and what, what else do I have here? That's probably what I have. Milk, bread, meat, and, and then there's also salt, which is another type of, uh, uh, and water. Water is a type of food, right? We can say water is a food, right? Right, Chilo? Sure, why not? All right. I'm going to go ahead. It's, it's, it goes with the food. It's like an accompaniment for the food. It's a consumable, right, but it goes with food, right? All right. So we're, how are we on time, Brother Cloud? We've got five minutes and 40 seconds left. We, we still have five minutes and 40 seconds left on this particular physical food topic. So I want you to go ahead and read that verse again. O oh, taste and see that Yahweh is good. Blessed is the man that takes refuge in him. Okay, so we are talking about tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. I've heard, I've heard somebody like doing some science experiments where they blindfolded a room of, of, of kids like such as yourself and they, they, they would have to taste and be able to say whatever it is they are tasting. And they were actually encouraged to use their other senses, like, what does it feel like? What am I feeling? Okay, that's spaghetti. And you put it in your mouth. No, it's not spaghetti. Actually, I, I tricked you. It's worms. Okay? So be careful. No, I'm just kidding. That's not, that's not how it happened. That's not at all what happened. But what I'm saying is often, uh, you know, even when you smell things like sugar. Have you ever smelled sugar, Katie? No? Yeah. Well, guess what? I've, uh, yeah, sugar has a horrible smell, by the way, but it tastes sweet. Okay? So, but what, what God is telling us here is to taste and see. See, those are two different systems. Taste and see. Taste and see. Okay? So you're... Tasty. 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 Okay? Taste see. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is like... Uh, I know there, are time, there may have been a time you've tried something and you know it's so cool. You know, oh, wow, that's amazing. Oh, you should try it, right? Have you ever had experiences like that? You taste a food before, oh, man, you've got to try this restaurant out. Anybody have a story like that? I know Katie does. I know, I know her father and, and, and Sonielle and, and maybe Cloud. Like, you went to a restaurant and you go, oh, you've got to try this. Have you ever tried this before? Have you ever tried Thai food? Oh, you got to try it. It's amazing. It's best food in the world. Those Thai people, they know how to mix particular flavors that you wouldn't even dream were possible. I'm talking about pineapples, 
coconut milk and chicken, hot peppers. Does that sound good to you, brother, Sonio? Okay, so <laughs> bear with me. I know you guys are tired, but I, I, I feel like Katie. Katie, what is your favorite cuisine out of all the worlds? Like, the, we'll talk, uh, just pick a number one. Number one country anywhere. Like, what, what cuisine? Asians. Asians. Like, within what Asian food? Like, I know there's Chinese, there's... There's, uh, you know, there's different types of Asian food. There's, like you said, the, Viet the Vietnamese and, and stuff like that. What is your favorite out of Asian? I don't have one. <laughs> you don't have one. Okay, so, but, eight, but what if someone has come to you like, oh, I don't like Vietnamese. I know, they have a misconception about what Vietnamese food is like. What would you tell them? That, <laughs> that it's good. And like Why? Why is it good? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an objective thing anyways, specific but, to person. Okay, but what I'm getting at I'm is, okay, <laughs> okay, Sydney, you go ahead. My favorite cuisine is Korean. I love Korean food. You like Korean food? Yes. Why? Why is it good to you? Because it tastes good. All right, put this to your mouth. That's it tastes good. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that you want other, because you know it tastes good, you want other people to try it, right? Because it's amazing, right? And that's what this, this word does for us, is that when we start eating this, not with our physical bodies, it's going to cause an excitement in us, the same kind of excitement that you have over Korean food, the same kind of excitement that you have over Vietnamese food, the same kind of excitement you have over French food, the same kind of excitement that you have over Taco Bell. Okay? <laughs> that's what the word does for us. That's our main point. What time? Brother, you've got to be the time master. What do we got here? One more minute. One more minute. Okay, so that is, the, that is the end of this section. Is everybody on board with what we have here so far? Yes, sir. All right. Now, as I said before, we have four different types. I'm going to add water as a type of food. Go ahead and give me the grace, the mercy to, to consider water a type of food, Okay. By the way, water can be a liquid and a, a solid and a gas. Did you know that? So that means you can actually crunch water. That means you can eat water, okay? Yeah, isn't that? That's amazing, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, so number one, number one, guys, guys, stay on board with me. Stay on board with me. Stay on board with me. Number one, we have uh, milk, okay? Milk. Now, who's got First Peter 1, verse 3? Go ahead and read it. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You're doing good. I don't know how to say any of these. Just, just make it up. <laughs> just make it up. Say anything. Really, it doesn't matter. They don't know. Nobody knows. All right, let me read it for you. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, see, I made that up, Asia and Bithynia, see? Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, and sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. See, this is just the beginning of the letter. He's, it's a formality. Hey, this is, this is uh, Peter, I'm talking to you over here in, uh, in the mighty name of... God over here in Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, you know. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Now, here is where you can read. Number, verse 3, Sydney. Okay. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the rest, resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Wow, wonderful. Okay. So what I'm getting at here is that has, uh, I don't know why I put that in there. That's not the verse that I wanted. But anyway, what I'm saying here is that milk is for who? Who eats milk? milk? Uh, who? Babies. babies. Good. Why do babies eat milk? Go ahead. The reason babies consume milk is because their teeth are too soft to eat regular food. Maybe they don't have teeth. 
Oh, yeah, they don't have teeth here. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about babies. All right, that's, that's all good. But Okay, good. Anybody else want to tackle that? Why do babies eat milk? The, okay, here. Sonia's got like an answer. That. Here you go, San, Sonia. Why do babies eat milk? Babies drink milk because they're not their body's not mature enough to eat solid food. Right, right. Their bodies can't handle solid food, right? Yeah. So it's simple and easy to, to digest. Any, any baby can digest it. Any baby from up to any age, even Shiloh's age, can digest uh, milk. When, <laughs> when we, That's not a slight, brother. It's just a fact. When we first become born again, we are spiritual babies, and spiritual babies eat what? They drink milk. Yes, low level gospel, and AKA what? Milk. Spiritual milk. Spiritual babies, okay? I don't know if there are any spiritual babies in this room. Spiritual babies lead a pretty simple life in our breast or bottle fed spiritual milk by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Sonia, are you, are you with me? Because spiritual babies cannot handle complex food items such as spiritual bread, spiritual meat, what have you. And there's also salt in there too. I don't know if there, does anybody feed their, their baby salt? I purely only feed them salt rock. Okay, I wouldn't recommend that because salt will dehydrate you. We'll get, that, we'll get to that later, but... That is a key to when he says salt in the light, you want to keep that in, at the forefront of your mind. Yeah, because you're a picky eater. I noticed that about you, Sonio. Okay, so what is the significance of these verses? Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. Go ahead, Katie. Hebrews 5. 12 through 14. All right. Guys, remember to have your, your Bibles ready and open at where they need to be. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full of, who are of full age. That is, those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Okay. By now, everybody in this room should be teachers. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the first things you need to know from God's word. What if I were to say that? It may, it may or may not be true. You still need milk, Sonyel. You still need milk, Katie. You still need milk, Air, uh, Cloud. It may or may not be true. I'm just pointing that out there. Now, how does that make you feel, Katie, if I were to say that? Is it true or not? Yes. Be honest. It's true? Yeah. I think that it would be. Hold on. Let's get the microphone over here. <laughs> Why, Cyrus? I think it's not as simple as the said person needs more spiritual milk and that's that. It's, there could be certain sections of your life that you're not as developed in as others. Mm -hmm. Some people are naturally more disciplined, just as an example. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone who's not naturally disciplined, then you would be like specifically just with discipline, you would still be drinking milk. Mm -hmm. right. But other areas might not be. So if Katie needs more milk, it's mm -hmm. not because the condition of her entire spirit and walk mm -hmm. is that she's immature. It's just that it's probably a section or two or three. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So what? another thing that, that uh, God does is he teaches us here a little, there a little. So we are all growing, and we may be deficient spiritually in other areas. In, uh, in some areas, what I'm getting from what Cyrus is saying in some areas, we may need more growth than others. You may be full-fledged spiritual adult in one key area, 
which is um, level-headedness, uh, going, uh, just being uh, emotionally uh, intelligent, whereas, hey, it's time to actually increase your faith in this area. Go out and talk to that person. Maybe you're not used to it, but God tells you to go ahead and go. You might have a specific person he needs you to target, like Shiloh. And go over to Shiloh and, 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 and show, show him what he needs to do. Just, that's what God does. He sends prophets to people. You know how, how, how God sends prophets to people? And what does the prophet do? do? Does anybody here know what the prophet does? Anybody? Sydney? Do you know what a, when God sends a prophet to his people, what does that prophet do? Here, Cloud knows. He sends a message. Right, and how is that message received? Uh, it depends on whether the person wants to listen or not. Right, so sometimes you might be that person, like it might be a friend of yours, where God is, wants you to deliver a message to this person, and it could be an un- inconvenient truth for that person, something uncomfortable, a growing lesson for this person. And it's up to that person to receive that message, okay? And, it, and, and sometimes we have to be that type of person to be that what, what, what they may feel is a stick in the mud um, and is going to rub them the wrong way, make them, feel, make them feel uncomfortable. We have to be that person from time to time. And we've got to make sure that we are doing it out of the spirit of love, Sydney, love. We're not come, we shouldn't come across as overly judgmental. Yes, we're judging them, but we're doing, the, we're doing it out of a spirit of love to help them out, okay? Hey, I noticed that you lie from time to time. I'm not saying you are, do this, Sydney. I'm just saying as an example. Sydney, I know, and this would be just you and me. Sydney, I notice you have a habit of stretching the truth. Now, why you do that is because you are spiritually deficient. You are spiritually immature in this aspect of being honorable, of being honest in all aspects of your life. How are we doing on time, Cloud? We have 50 seconds. 50 seconds. Does anybody, does everybody understand what I'm saying here? Sonia, sure. do you have any questions, Sonia? No. Are you sure? Okay. So that's what it means to be, uh, to be eating the milk. It's like you're eating this milk. Oh, God says don't lie. God says don't lie. So I'm, I'm eating that that milk labeled uh, don't lie over and over again, that bottle of milk that says don't lie, or that bottle of milk that says don't look at that, or that bottle of milk is, that says don't do this. That's what spiritual milk is. It's like you're, you're, you know is what the good thing is to do, and you're refreshing it, but you keep going back to that, and you're, and you're not doing any change. You're not making any changes. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Why? I don't know. It just makes sense. It's like kind of relatable. It's relatable, right? Because you can see the milk bottle. All right, here we go. On to the next section. We got bread. Do we have a verse for bread? Yes, we do. Now, bread, what does bread do? When you eat, what do you, when you go to a restaurant, you eat bread, right? What is bread for? Appetizers. Okay, so can you eat a, why can't you just have a whole meal of bread? Like, hey, mom, what's 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 for dinner? Bread. Why can't you do that, Katie? You hold, hold on. I want to hear what Katie says. Why can't you just say, hey, hey, mom, what's for dinner? Bread. Because you don't get a full meal. It's not a full meal. Like so without nutrients. So what what is an what does bread do then? You said it's an appetizer. What is that? What is that for? I don't know. You can use it with soup and stuff. Yeah, but but you can't. Like I said. The, it's, it serves a function, an appetizer. So what is the function of an appetizer? Okay. Sonia, you know? Go ahead. I think it's something like that gets you ready for something. It gets you ready, right. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an appetizer, and what is it doing for you? Is your it, it, it helps you, like, it can, helps you not for you to keep being hungry or something. Okay, As you're getting somewhere with that. This that's because they are the and they are the catalyst to your appetite. They're the catalyst to your appetite. They're never quite as much as you want. Mm-hmm. And then once you're done with your appetizer, you're waiting for your meal to get there. And right. Like, Come on, you know I mean? I'm hungry now. And then right. As soon as it gets there, you're like, oh, you just eat the whole thing. Okay, so you you guys hear what he's saying? You you understand that? Does everybody understand that? Yes. 
So that's why you can't just eat a meal of bread. It's, it's taking an, the word appetize and it's doing yeah. it to you. Yeah, yeah, it's appetizing you. Exactly. So that's what the bread does. It. So in other words, the bread gets you hungry for more. So what I'm saying here is that the word can be bread. There can be some areas in here. That, and we're on the next time, right? Okay. So there are other things in here that, that will cause you to, to, to reach for more, to be like, oh, man, that makes me more hungry. I want more. You see what I'm saying? And I have an example for you. I have a real life example that happened to me one day when I was reading Genesis. Who's got Genesis? I got that. I'm just kidding. I didn't ask anybody to read Genesis. I will read this for you. So this caused me a certain level of uh, perplexity when I saw this. And it says, I can just recite it. I don't know why I'm just, well, I've, I've memorized this. Okay, so Genesis 7, uh, 20, it says, this is when the, the waters, the flood came. And Noah's in the ark, okay? It says the waters were mighty. And 15, they rose 15 ama upward. Does anybody know what an ama is? A cubit? Does anybody know what a cubit is? Do you? You're, you know what a cubit is? I don't know the measurement. Okay. Okay, so a cubit is just, it's roughly about a foot and a half worth, okay? So he's saying that the waters were mighty and they rose 15 ama upward. So just fi imagine 15 times 12 and a half feet roughly. And then he says all the mountains were covered, okay? All the mountains were covered, right? It, so that caused me some perplexity. Like that, that was my appetizer. So I looked up, I was like, well, I looked up the measurement. What is an ama? Okay, I understand that. Now, wait, a mountain. Okay, this word mountain. Okay, how big does a mountain have to be in order to be considered a mountain? Do you know? It has to be at least a thousand or so feet to be a mountain. So 15 ama, that's not cutting it for a mountain. Okay, so that's like 300 feet almost. 300-ish feet is, is uh, 15 ama. Are you with me, Cloud? So you see this is causing me to be like a concern. That's what the bread does. It, it's causing you to, to really look for an answer. And that's what I want you guys to, to start to be able to do. Because there are going to be things in here that are going to spark your curiosity, Sonia. And you're going to want to know why it's there. Does that make sense? That's the appetizer. That's the bread. Does that make sense, Katie? So I looked this up. And I was able to determine that the word for mountain in that, in that verse, the word for mountain was her, her in Hebrew. Her can be translated as mountain, but it also can be translated as hill. And hills can be, hey, 15 alma tall. So we're good. So at this point in time, in this verse, the waters were getting mighty. They were covering the mountains, which were the hills. And then eventually we know that the rain kept going for 40 days and 40 nights. And you can imagine that it will cover the highest mountain. If it's raining consistently, dogs and cats, for 40, 40 days and 40 nights, you bet you they're going to cover a thousand plus second thousand feet, right? Yeah. Exactly. How are we doing on time, Cloud? Anyway, so... You guys get what I'm saying. The bread is an appetizer. This word of God can be what? It can be milk. And you don't want to make the habit of eating the same, drinking the same bottle. It says, hey, Sydney, quit lying, Sydney. And, and I know that, you know, it's good. Okay, good. All right, I'll do that. I'll do that. Don't, don't just be a hearer of the word, Sydney. Be a doer of the word. Amen. Is everybody on board with what I'm saying? Shiloh, you got anything to add? Taco Bell will destroy you. Okay. And bread is just an appetizer. It's just the beginning of what God has for you. Okay. So is there anything that you can share that you found on your own, a type of bread? Like, why does it say that? And, and you went, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask of God to reveal the answer to me. Do you have any stories? Does anybody here have a story like that? Um, I think, like, recently I've been reading in... Yeah, Proverbs. Okay. And it's just like a bunch of 
little nuggets of wisdom that that you could easily apply to your own life. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, this is so relatable, even for being, like, old. Like, it was written, like, you know, a while ago. Right, it's Proverbs. Like, relatable to my current situation. Do you have one specifically? Give me one proverb specifically that relates to your current um, situation. Anyone at all. He's tired. He's he's half asleep right now. I'll give you I'll give you that as a, a benefit of the doubt. Does anybody have a story, a specific thing? I know Cyrus. You did a lot of deep diving into the word. Is there anything that causes you? Why? What? This seems to contradict. Why is that? Like we have people. I remember there was a time that I was studying Romans seven, and one of the verses said, "And by through the commands." He was deceived. Or it said something about how the commands, the commandments ended up with somebody sinning. Uh -huh. And I was like, at first I was like, there's no way that this is saying that the Ten, com the Ten Commandments caused a human to sin. Yeah. And then as I read, I found other areas in Romans and the, sur and the surrounding books mm -hmm. that once... Like, that was the appetizer. Once I kept reading and studying, I found out, like, oh, it wasn't saying literally the Ten Commandments caused some of the sin. It was saying right. that the Ten Commandments can be used to deceive you, but not by Yahweh. Like, in your own mm. flesh right. and in your mind, the rationalization right. that goes on. Cognitive dissonance. Yeah, we'll look at the Ten Commandments and you'll pervert it. Right, you'll you'll twist the word. But at first, right. just reading the verse, it's like, what? Like, does yeah, this yeah, say yeah. that in the Bible? It says that. Right. So what? So what was your method for uncovering that? Well, I looked at. Um, I looked at the certain words in there in mm. the Hebrew, mm. and then I um. And then I read like three chapters before it like mm -hmm. surrounding it and mm -hmm. just trying to find other verses that are similar because mm -hmm. Paul repeats himself quite a lot so it's mm -hmm. pretty easy to find verse that's similar right yeah and so I was doing that and then once I found a bunch of the other similar ones I saw what that said in place of it mm -hmm. and I was like okay now I have a better understanding of the verse gotcha okay so Another thing that we should be doing and putting into practice is whenever we have a question, and it can be about anything, it doesn't necessarily have to be about the Word, but we should be getting our answers through the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, God says, I will answer your prayers. And I think that God is more often, He's more often will answer the prayer concerning His Word than if it's a prayer concerning something materialistic, Right? Oh God, can I can I can you help me find a girlfriend? Oh God, can you help me find a, a job? Lord, help me find a job. Or Lord, help me understand your word. Which one do you think he'll answer first? And help me find a girlfriend or help me understand your word? The second one. The uh, yeah. Help me find your word. I understand your word. Okay, so now we're on to the next section. Go ahead and start it off for the next section. We have the concept of water okay why water why water who's got john 4 1 through 32 cloud yeah. why water why does god call his word water or why Chapter is four, right? it important 4 1 through 32 all right let me read yes go ahead therefore when the lord knew that the pharisees had heard that jesus made and baptized more disciples than john Though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, 
How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. How do you interpret that verse, those verses, uh, particularly the last one you read? Everyone who drinks this water will never be thirsty again, and whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I will give them, I give them, will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I want to know how you interpret that, Cloud. The water that he gives us, yes, is the only thing that that will satisfy your soul that mm -hmm. this world can give you. Right. Yeah. Right. Nothing else can satisfy you like he can. Amen. Amen. So, what was the longest time you went without water, brother? I'm just curious. I don't know. Anybody here? What's the longest time you've ever been without water, Cyrus? Shiloh? Hey, you remember when you were really thirsty? Anybody? You can't go that long, right? So on, all liquid, water, yeah, water. You remember, you know, you know what it's like to be thirsty, right? Okay, and you remember guzzling down that water, that cold water, and you remember feeling it like washing, like almost like it's washing over your ribs, right? That's the best feeling, right? That's the best feeling. Exactly. So that's what the, I mean, now think of what that does for us on the inside. For soul, We have souls all over the place that are just like desert dry. And what they need is what Jesus says right here. And you, that feeling that you described, the best feeling in the world, the waters, the cold water, and you could feel it coming down your esophagus and over your ribs. That's what the, the, the Holy Spirit does that, but so much better. Because... This life is temporary, 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 and, there, and everything is just a chasing after the wind and meaningless unless you have that water, the living water that Yahshua provides for you, okay? And, and so what I'm getting at here is that this woman didn't realize that, and there are going to be people in our lives that don't realize this because she's, she's, the woman said to him after he says this, Cloud, after he says this, he, she says, Sir, and, and look, I, this is how I interpret this. I interpret this almost like a Shiloh, if Shiloh were a Sumerian woman. She says to Jesus, Sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw the water. Did you realize that? This lady's being sarcastic with Jesus. She doesn't believe him. And there are going to be people that don't believe us. But that should never bother us because we are, we are actually spiritual Adults, amidst people that are not even have the beginning of knowledge and wisdom to understand where we're coming from. Because it says the beginning of knowledge and wisdom is what, Cloud? The fear of the Lord. Right, the fear of the Lord. And that's not like an unhealthy fear. That's not like a, ah! it's, it's like, it's a it's a reverence. It's more of like a respect. Yeah. Like we, we, it's like a fear that you have for your, for your, for your dad. If, yeah. yeah. If he's a disciplinarian, right? Yeah. You know, you know, your dad is going to whip you if you do something wrong, right? Yeah. Exactly. So it doesn't make sense to the world. I'm about to land the ship soon, but I want to get some feedback. Can we, can we get a message for your dad? And ha is this a good teaching so far? Father. Being honest. Captain Wendell has a lot of improvement to do okay no just kidding 
This has been nice. I like the way that Captain Wendell has broken up the four segments of our study this morning mm -hmm. with the different substances of spiritual consumption. Yes, very good. All right, and now we got one more segment. We, we can go ahead and speed this one up. Go ahead and flip this to the next segment. Okay, and now we are on the subject of meat. meat. Everybody say it, meat. meat. Say it, meat. meat. All right, good. So why? Uh, why? Why is the God's word? Okay, just in, in a few right here, we, I'm just going to read this section right here. So when, they, when, the, when the disciples came back, they saw Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman. And by this time, the Samaritan woman, was, her mind was blown because she realized that he was indeed the Messiah. Because he was revealing intimate details about the Samaritan woman. And, he, and she goes, you must be a prophet. And he goes, uh-uh, I'm, pro I'm not a prophet. I am the, not only a prophet, I am the Messiah. And it blew her mind. Now the disciples came back. Now listen to this. Just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. Not only a woman, but a Samaritan woman nonetheless. But no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come, See a man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him. Now listen to this. We're on the topic of food, right? Are we talking about food, physical and spiritual food, right? The disciples said this. Rabbi, eat something. What did he say? He said, but he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Okay? Exactly. What do you think the food was that Yeshua was referring to? I think that that this may have been a time period where, although the disciples were the disciples, they were not as far along in understanding mm -hmm. as you may have thought. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was busy pretty much telling them, like, there's so much that you guys don't know. Right, exactly. So much about the kingdom that you have not even close to seen and tasted. Exactly. The and deeper mysteries of that kingdom, I think, are the bread that right. Yeshua is telling them, like, yeah, you guys are worrying about food right now. Right. But the food I have is crazy. Right, exactly. Amen. And that's what the food we're, we're talking about. We're talking about this, Brother Sonio. This is food right here. Okay, and these disciples don't have what you have right now, Sonio. They, don't, they didn't even have the Holy Spirit yet. They're not even babies yet. You understand? They're before the, the birth. So now we're on the topic of why is the word referred to as meat. Sonia, I want to ask you, because you haven't been doing any talking in a while. What, why do you think the word is referred to as meat? Go ahead. We, we kind of alluded to it earlier. Um, it's, it shows about the growth, the maturity of drinking milk. And now you're eating solid food. Right. Solid food. Yeah. Which is for who? For, like, spiritually matured people. Exactly. That's right. Okay, now stay there. How do you build physical muscles, Sonia? Do you know? Exercise. Exercise, right. And what does exercise do to your muscles? They break down muscle fibers, and then those muscle fibers basically heal themselves up. But when they heal themselves up, they become stronger and bigger. Exactly. So this right here, this is going to exercise you, your spiritual muscles. It's going to weaken your spirit. It's going to weaken your, your flesh so that your spirit and your spiritual muscles can grow and be more superior to your flesh, because your flesh desires things of this world, things that are wicked, and is naturally rebellious, rebellious against your creator. You understand that, Sonia? Okay, so uh, this is real man's food. This is real man, real adult food, real woman adult food, real spiritual adult food is the meat. It's complex, and it requires the spiritual strength to properly digest and metabolize the meat. Okay? 
metabolize. You know what the, the, the what metabolism is? It's basically there's two different types of metabolism. You have catabolic and anabolic. So catabolic is when when the body it breaks, it it extracts the energy. And anabolic, I believe, is when it uses that energy to build. Okay? The meat adds strength to our, our weakened spiritual muscles. That's what the meat does. This is adding spiritual muscle to you, Sydney, so that you can go ahead and conquer the world if you wanted to, okay, by the power of the Holy Spirit to bring, to bring glory to His name. That is, and now I'm going to ask you, what do you think is the, the ultimate best method to weaken your spiritual muscle? Any idea? Personally, this is not just for anybody. This is just personally for me. Mm -hmm. Is uh, smoking weed and drinking alcohol? No, 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 no. That is that is not what I'm talking about. What? What are you talking about? I'm talking about building spiritual spiritual muscle. See, you're not going to you're not going to weaken your spiritual muscle by that. If anything, yes, you will. Yes, you will. No, 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 no. You don't under, you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm not I'm not trying I'm not trying to I'm not saying I'm not saying anything negative. I'm saying to build muscle. If anything, that's gonna that's like eating potato chips. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying, in order to build spiritual muscle, you know how you know when you when you when you lift weights. You're 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 doing good things to your body yeah. because it's 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 actually it's weakening the spiritual it's muscle. Weakening like not not like oh you're turning away and you're going down da- d- bad directions. He means weaken in the sense that it's training, like it's sore. Oh, the word I weak mean, for the sake of being no 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 sore. no no no. Yeah. We're talking about exercise. Okay, thank you, thank you. See, you're helping her. Yeah. See, that's how the Holy Spirit works. A good so way. what I'm saying, a good way to exercise. Fasting. There you go. Fasting. That is exactly the answer I was looking for. Fasting. Okay. Amen. No, See, no, 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 the Holy Spirit. That. The Holy Spirit gave that to you. I want you guys to realize, even you, you too. Fasting is the number one way to expedite this process, and it takes a lot of Holy Spirit. See, you can't do it on your own. Nobody can do this on their own. Okay. The Holy Spirit. Well, the, well, and I'm, I promise you, if you fast, if you fast, you will be a mighty man of God. I mean, it's 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 it's, go, it's it's going to it's going to deliver a message. See, the Lord. I just want to land the plane by saying this: that the Lord is more ready to bless you, Katie, more ready to bless you than you are to receive it. And all you have to do is take these tiny leaps of faith. Tiny leaps of faith. It could be one day. It could be two days. It could be three days. But the more you do it, the more you're going to want it. The more you're going to desire it. And the more it's going to change your life and change the lives of others. And people are going to be looking at you and they're going to see Yahshua. They're going to see the lights. And they're going to be drawn towards it. And, And who knows? Every desire of your heart is going to be happening. I'm telling you, Prayers are going to be answered that you never even prayed. It's like, wow, God, I wanted this, but I didn't even know I needed it. That's what I'm saying. That, that's the, that, that can only happen if you're fasting. And I, 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 I kind of wanted that to be an understated thing, but the Holy Spirit is really putting it on me to go over on it, you guys. It's important. You guys are the next generation. You're, go- you're going to be going undergoing more hard stuff than I have ever been going through. More hard stuff than your dad's been going through because we are reaching the end faster than we even realize it. So you guys need to be ready. You, you are like the X-Men of our generation. So I would encourage you to start considering that as we are wrapping towards the end. Okay, so what is our job as sons of God? Okay, at the end of the day, we have this spiritual growth coming into us, but our end goal is to be a son of God. Full-fledged spiritual adult. My food, says Jesus, and this is a continuation 
where he answers, I have food you don't know about. He says, and they're like, what food is he talking about? Is he talking about this? this, this, this you know how the disciples, uh, is he, has he got some uh, tacos somewhere? Or like, you know, they, no, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying, it's still four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps and draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together, thus saying, one sows, another reaps. All I'm saying here, brothers, is that we are in for a wild ride, the wildest dream. Uh, it, it, it is going to be amazing. Enjoy the ride. Look, we have a cup right here. Look, the Holy Spirit gave Cloud the cup that says, enjoy the ride. And that's where we're going to land the plane. You guys enjoy that? All right, let's break up. Thank you for listening if you made it this far. God bless you. We love you. Shabbat shalom.